Welcome to the Leading Woman Show. <laughs> One of the identified causes of poor women's representation in Nigeria's political system is the misconception by the public that women are not competent as political leaders. Women aspiring for political positions are often unconsciously considered by the public to have less experience or competence than their male counterparts. This misconception fuels political outcomes and in many ways discourages women from actively participating and vying for political positions. Women can be leaders. However, the people who vote or appoint leaders have to see beyond their gender and focus on their qualifications. If we do not change the public's perception and disposition to women in politics, then women will continue to struggle. Hello and welcome to the Leading Woman Show, the election series, brought to you with support from the National Endowment for Democracy. I'm Abosede Jojogan, and today we will be discussing the power of the citizenry for women's political inclusion. To do so with me, I have three amazing guests in the studio. First is Yemi Adamoleku, who is the executive director of Enough is Enough Nigeria and was recently announced as one of the winners of the 2022 Global Citizen Prize for her impact on governance. Welcome, Yemi. <laughs> also in the studio with me today is Dr. Munirat Antoleki, who is an actress, host, an influencer. She's the owner of Room 22 Agency and founder of the Live Wire Project. Welcome. <laughs> Finally, I have Ezugu Chukudi. He's an idea generator, screenwriter, content creator, political satirist, and public affairs analyst. Welcome, Chukudi. Now sit back, relax, and let's have a great conversation. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really for glad me. to have you. And I think we're really going to talk about something that's very important. So let's start. And I want to start with you, Yemi. Ah. So, apart mm -hmm. from political parties being a significant determinant, mm -hmm. right, for women being able to get into political office, would you say that gender and ethnicity play a role in this country? Oh, well, certainly, because it plays a role for politics generally. So I think it's, um, but Nigeria is just even more special, I guess I would say, because our ethnic divides are, have gotten worse, I guess, over the years. And so for even this election cycle, we're already having uh, especially at the presidential level, comments around the type of ethnic group we will want or not want, as the case may be. And to your point about the intro, not a conversation about competence or their qualifications, mm -hmm. quote unquote. And I think one of the issues with gender also is that what you see reinforces your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And since we're talking about public perception, mm -hmm. there are not that many female examples who are in the political space. And so that sort of notion of women and politics gets reinforced year after year. And I'm, as you know better probably than I do, the numbers keep going down. So yeah. it makes it harder and harder yep. to reinforce the fact that women can and have a place in that space. Absolutely. What would you say to that, Chukudi? I think it's um, essentially a failure to look at competence and capacity. Mm -hmm. Because if we go by the parameters for people who want to exercise their right to suffrage, it's the barest minimum. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a primary school certificate mm -hmm. degree... <laughs> Certificate, primary school certificate and degree. You can aspire to public office so long as you have the right backing and some people are willing to give you the support. But some people look at women and say, you have to, you have to ascend Mount Kilimanjaro <laughs> before we think that you are qualified. It's essentially about capacity and competence. So even in the little things that people do, when they get the opportunity to preside over you know, whatever, whatever, whatever they are giving the opportunity to preside over, and you see how they deliver on the job, I think it would go a long way. So as a people, we must get to the point where 
It's not essentially where this person is from or what Ivy League colleges that they attended. It's essentially about if we give you the opportunity, given the fact that we validate your candidacy and you're supposed to serve us, even though you're the leader, you are going to deliver on your promises to the people. Absolutely. And to, what would you say to that? I mean, I totally agree. Nigeria is a country of stereotypes. <laughs> there's a stereotype about everyone's culture, your streets, your <laughs> whoever. Every, there's a stereotype Name, about everything. Yeah. And I think especially when we're speaking about women in particular, we can, we can never forget the religious aspect of it all. Yeah. We have to point to the fact that as Muslims, I am one, you know, people feel like they claim that it says that women are not supposed to take leadership roles. This is a actual fact. So this is beyond politics or Nigeria. Religiously, there are people who Believe make that. women feel like they are not supposed to be leaders. So that automatically knocks out 50% mm -hmm. of our options from, from the top. And those M Muslim or maybe Northern women, because they, you know, they may translate the same, once they do go out, they're already seen as mm -hmm. black sheep. They are mm -hmm. a problem. Because they're going against because they're going school. against the they're going against the rules. So there's even more beyond just the political aspect of things. There are home-based issues that mm -hmm. are, are literally affecting women from taking the step to want to go. So it's not even just the citizens not voting for them. There's yeah. some women who are afraid for their lives. Because yeah. for me, my life is a little bit more important than Nigeria. I love Nigeria, <laughs> but I'm more worried about myself, to be quite honest. So there's some people who are yeah. actually afraid of taking that step. So we definitely have some, some work to do. Some, some barriers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I agree with you. And so, Yemi, let me come back to you. Women continue to struggle. And you know, it's, it's peculiar because when it comes to voting, mm -hmm. women, women make up a significant number. Yep. So what's interesting is that as citizens, we're voting men in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, to pick up on Anto's point, I think our, your religious and cultural framing, we can't, dis, we can't disentangle that. So you grow up in a community where women can't do mm -hmm. or women shouldn't do, number one. And then if you then have options where you have one woman and 10 men, I mean, you've already been biased enough to think that the woman can't do. So your options is really about the 10 men, num number one. Number two, I think also just sort of that self-thinking of who will do what. Mm. Women don't have a reputation for being as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? As generous, mm. financially generous as mm. men. So for all the rallies and all the campaigns, it's men that will give out the rice. The Ankara did this, did that. So that just reinforces like a man pays me better mm. than a woman. Not because I don't like you, you're cute and all, but <laughs> a man will pay me better. Sure. And I think as women, we're not deliberate about dealing with those stereotypes, mm -hmm. dealing with those barriers mm. and taking, attacking them head on. We can't assume they're going to go away. And we mm. can't assume. And another thing, I guess part of it, maybe it's a bit of, shall I say, arrogance on the part of women. Because you're a woman doesn't mean I should vote for you. I'm sorry. And I, I advocate that 100%. Tukudi spoke about competence, capacity, courage. What have you done? The fact that you've got breasts and other body parts doesn't make you, because I'm a woman, the fact that we are aligned, quote unquote. So and I think maybe there's a bit of that assumption. But women, and it, it's unfortunate, but women just have to do a little bit more to prove. And, it, and it's not just politics. And I think that's not, it's mm -hmm. not just politics. It's in the business world. It's in school. It's in anywhere that you have women or men. Women always have to work 10 times as hard. Mm. And politics is just one of those spaces. Yeah. Thank you for that. So Thanks. I think to be fair, if we have already spoken about a society where because of barriers placed by religion and ethnicity, mm. the woman doesn't get the opportunity mm. There's a lot of unlearning to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we That's cannot why live, we're here. We <laughs> cannot live in a society where you already know that the person is disadvantaged, but every other thing that you do places them in a situation where they cannot get out of it. Mm. For example, you know, you have the major political parties. I want to use them as an example because, I mean, all the influence and whatever change that they can effect, you know, they are not taking advantage of it. Now you have... National leader, deputy national leader, <laughs> chairman, south, chairman, east, chairman, where they now have women, women leader. leader. <laughs> I have been to political rallies where it would appear like the only thing they want these women to do is to sing songs. And dance. And yeah. dance. And then and maybe insult, insult, yeah. insult the, the candidate of the other oh, political parties. Like... And the women do it really very well. <laughs> and I that's mean, what we're asking. So, first of all, I think to Yemi's point, women have been 
given that position. Mm -hmm. So first mm -hmm. of all, Anto said we're oriented. Yes. So the socialization process, which is largely mm -hmm. influenced by our, by our culture sure. and religion, mm -hmm. right? So we're socialized to be, and then gender roles, right? But then we are seeing that what it is, it is detrimental to society. Like it is not moving us forward. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying that the people, because in all honesty, the people dancing are somebody's mommy, <laughs> somebody's <laughs> auntie, somebody's somebody, sister. and that's what I'm, somebody's sister, yep. and that's what I'm saying. And then the people telling them to dance, somebody's daddy, and so why are the citizenry? Why are we not having communal conversations to say, "But mommy, you are strong. You can do this. Go and lead." What, what, what is that missing piece? So I think the missing piece is the people who have the power to force that change. But deliberately, they are not doing what and they are doing. And these are men? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah, no, that, that's the truth. So, so, so I have a daughter. Mm. And I do not treat my daughter differently from my son. Because I believe it's essentially about capacity and capability. That. And I would not want anybody to treat my daughter any different. differently. So if I, as a man, think that, okay, let's give them the opportunity and see what they can do. Because of the, the talent that God has imbued in them. Why are people deliberately circumventing the system? And why, for example, why are we holding political meetings in the dead of the night? Are we Very wizards? good question. And so let me come. To <laughs> <laughs> but Anto, let me let me come to you. What is, what is that missing piece? What do you think is the missing piece? Honestly, I think the missing piece is reality. <laughs> I, no, honestly, I don't think that people are being realistic about how politics is played. Mm. The game is. The game. the game. Even like he's mentioned that, you know, we should be able to tell our mother that, oh, you can go forward. But can she really? So I just recently started with working with the electorate and we've started to research female candidates and we cannot find anything about these Online. ladies. Like even their names. <laughs> one website will add Z. Another website will be S. <laughs> no one is going to vote for you if we do not even have information yeah. about you. The game is the game. Yeah. I need to know who you are. You can't just wake up today and say, I'm running for office. You don't have any. There's nothing. And no proof, no mm. evidence. We know mm. that there's some people who have gotten there based on nothing, but they had something. You know, there there has to be. Well, the barriers are just even higher for women. Yeah, exactly. So you have to understand that. That's that's I'm speaking about real, reality. You have to understand that you have to work a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. So by now you should have an Instagram page if you're running for office. At least <laughs> that one's free. Let's find if you, you. You know, if you can't even afford media, you can do Instagram. That one is free. You have to work a little bit harder. harder. Has, you, you have to show working. You, you, can't just, show, okay. you have to show work in. For me, I think so. Mm. I could be wrong. But. So while I agree with you, but then again, if we're speaking about reality, then we need to understand that in elections in Nigeria, where people who are close to 80 years still come out to say, you must have structure. Mm. You need to understand that it is more than 2,000 followers on Instagram. So let me ask oh, you, what is structure? Yes. Is citizen power structure? Yes, and I'll come to that. But it's, what Anto is speaking is about presence. So EIE has organized quite a number of debates. Mm -hmm. So we'll do our polling and it's qualitative and quantitative. Part of it is, do you have posters anywhere? Do you have in an office that someone can come into? And without failing most gubernatorial um, elections, women will not have an office. There'll be no poster to see. And they'll be talking about they don't have they money. I'm like, check, come. <laughs> your house can be your office, yes. starting point number one. Number Hello. two, and this is to Anto's point, and, and I like that point. You can't want to be governor of a state and nobody knows you. Structures. Nobody wants to give you anything. You can't leverage on anything, be it your church, women's association, old girls association, old school, whatever, something cooperative, your banker. Somebody must know something and must be willing to give you something for them to say the whole entire state they want to give you. So we do our polling and no woman is on the list. And they say that we should have given one space for a woman. And I'm like, but for why? Just because she's a woman? And the point is, so in, in that point about structure, and that goes to the point, you should have some, some goodwill, some yeah. citizens mm -hmm. that can speak up for you. And our citizens structure most definitely. Political parties are used to thinking of structure within the context of the party. Yeah. So your ward people that are members at your ward mm -hmm. level, local government level, state level, that is their structure because it's a structure they can count. It's a structure they can manage. Mm -hmm. It's a structure that they know. Now, if citizens decide that they want to either vote for Anto or vote for Bosse, they can build a structure around that. <laughs> is it a lot more work? Certainly a lot more work. But is it doable? I think so. Because ultimately, it's citizens that vote. Yeah. Sometimes party members, it's, it's the fact that you can almost assume that because I'm a member of party A, I will vote for candidates in my party. Mm -hmm. 
But citizens that are not members of parties are more fluid in who they can vote for. Yeah. But if they decide to rally around a particular candidate and build that structure, then in my opinion, it's parallel. Sure. It's a bit harder because they are not tied to the mm -hmm. party, but it's also more potent because they don't the need the party. Translate. They are willing to invest their time, their resources, mm -hmm. their energy, because mm -hmm. they believe in the in candidate. The candidate. Yeah. So Chukiri, let me come to you because, I mean, we've heard a lot of talk about the office of the citizen, right? Um, and I think that it's beginning to resonate, mm. right? Now, you do a lot of engagement through the work that you do with the citizens. I have a question. The economy affects all of us, mm. but actually women are often on the mm -hmm. disadvantage Very end. Very true. You know, things are not just working. You, maternal mortality, infant when you think about... So I guess my question is, don't Nigerians want better? Because mm -hmm. the evidence shows us that when women are in positions of leadership, we all benefit. Facts. So I hear us on that there's a mindset challenge. But how long will we wait to change mindsets mm -hmm. for people to start to support women, you know, and vote women? Like, but because we all want change. I think, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of unlearning because, I mean, it would appear like we are indoctrinated to believe in certain things. And so sometimes when you share your opinion, people are like, ah, are you sure you are not, are you sure you are not doing too much? You know these women, if you, if you give them allow, they will take allowance. So there is always, people are always, people are always on the defensive. So when the woman expresses herself, ah, ah, like, why are you talking? Are you not a, you are a woman now? Why are you talking too much? So you become afraid when you see somebody who is expressive. When you see somebody who says, okay, this is what the challenge is. Let's have a go at it. You say, ah, why? Let me take the lead now. You are a woman. Mm -hmm. So you cannot keep telling people you are a woman, you are a woman, and not expect that we are going to continue in the trajectory of underdevelopment and poverty that we are currently dealing with. So I believe that why women are doing their best, because in fairness, I mean, Opa Sonjo mentioned that he had to deal with a lot of challenges appointing certain women into his own cabinet or as the CIC. He had the, he had the opportunity and the powers to do so. But there were people who were like, uh-uh, why will you appoint this woman? But at the end of the day, if, I, if, I, if we do like a poll count here right now, I am going to mention some women in the history of this country. I'm not talking of Queen Amina of Zaria or Olufumila or Ransom Kuti. Women in, uh, in, since 1999 that I am very sure you can count on one hand the men that would measure up to, up to these women. When we talk about their capacity and their competence, for example, the late Professor Dora Aquini. Yeah. Till date, we have had people who upon people, some people have, a lot of people have not been able to consolidate on what she has been able to achieve. So I think that when we talk about women, the first thing that should not come to the mind is uh, this one that talks too much. This one that will not come here, will not give her allowance, she will not take allowance. It should be about, okay, people who giving facts that are tested and proven when they get the opportunity would effect positive change that our lives would improve tremendously. Collectively. Yes. Yeah. So, Anto, let me come to you. I, I mean, basically, talking about the work that you mm -hmm. say you're now, you're now doing, what do women, like, what can women start to do? And I think that was your point on visibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what can women start to do to get support of the citizens? Because I think they're multi-layers, right? Yeah. It's the first, oh, you're my sister. Ah, sister, I want to run. Ah. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So we even say what we your husband say. Exactly. <laughs> so what do women need to start to do, right? To start to gather support, sure. to start to shape, you know, mindset mm -hmm. is a long-term game. Mm -hmm. What can we do practically? I think first is the understanding of the game mm -hmm. and realizing that the women's game has to be played a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. let's just think about how we even vote in Nigeria. First and foremost, the people that usually vote are not even the most educated. Yeah. So the people that usually vote are only voting based on the image they see on the ballot paper. It's either a broom, an umbrella, three mommy, daddy, bikini. You know, like that's how they're voting. They don't even know the name of the candidates that they're voting for. So women who want to be voted for need to now start talking to people who, that even know they are running for office, even understand what their office is about. Yeah. If you're just going back to your village people, they don't understand how they don't 
understand the voting process. It's only an image they see, so they won't even know that, oh, is my, my sister is the one that's under... Represents. Represents this. Yeah. So you, ha you have to play your own game differently. Leave the people f that are doing that one, doing that one. You actually have to go and speak to people who understand the office you're running for. They know your name. They know what you look like. And they can then tell your story to the next person. Because one person cannot reach a million. Yeah. But if you have 10... They can, they're closer to reaching that means. I think it's playing the game a little bit differently. Women are still following what the men are doing or what people of past are doing. Yeah. The game has to change. Mm. It, has to, it has to change. I appreciate that. And mm -hmm. I think, so Yemi, what is this game we've been playing? And I mean, the work that you have done, what is, what is this game? Is it that women don't have the secret sauce? <laughs> like, what is the secret sauce for? Because it's the same, you know, what... Ultimately, I know that voter turnout in this country has not been great, mm -hmm. right? Only a small percentage, right? Maybe 20 something percent mm -hmm. vote. But those are still people who come out, mm -hmm. to your point. Mm -hmm. How can those people, yes, not enough women make it to the ballot, but when there are women on the ballot, why are they not the ones that are winners? It's hard because also with our politics in general, the people who make it the ballot are not our best for the most part. So now, when you now have a system that's already stacked against women, now if the woman is also not represented, it's almost like you have to have 10 men, and then the one woman has to be like the shiniest best, as in... You, An angel. As, yes. in, you <laughs> will, as in, you will be blind not to see that this is the woman for the job. So that, I think there's that barrier. The other barrier is what you said about leadership. Women are okay as leaders of the home. Mm -hmm. To a certain degree, leaders in business, we will give them small because we can see, we can see the cash. Yeah. So when a woman is successful in business, her, the profitability and the fact that she has the money speaks for mm -hmm. her. But also, we don't have examples of women in politics. So mm -hmm. when I was waiting for you to do the five, because it's, even me, I was cracking my brain trying to think, how many, how many can I name? And so that, therein lies the challenge. Mm -hmm. Therein is also a challenge. So the game is simply the fact that starting point, we live in a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. So men are the game or the game players or yeah. the, or the, the rule, rule makers. makers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Men are the rule makers. So starting point. Secondly, you now layer that with religion. You layer that with culture. Mm. And then you layer that with a citizenry that for the most part don't really care. So within the context of the political party that throws up candidates, nobody is challenging them. True. The women are, not, women are there as women mm -hmm. leaders or party members, but they're not challenging the process. Yeah. They're playing the game mm -hmm. as it is. So, I mean, I don't know what state it was. The woman leader was a man. Kano. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. The woman leader was a oh, man. No, Kano is commissioner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Then commissioner, commissioner of women, women affairs is in some states mm -hmm. are women. Are uh, men, rather. Mm -hmm. But then the women sit there yeah, and say nothing. Yeah. So the fact that we also continue to allow this. So within that political party, if, okay, she's woman leader. If the woman leader had mobilized women in the party and gone to the governor and said, oh, Abba, at least this one leave for mm -hmm. us, even if you won't do anything. The one that has women in the title, leave that one for us. So those types of things about us also taking that, taking that space back. And then the point I think you and Anto both made is women also playing it slightly different. So that's the game. So the game is the structure that's been mm -hmm. set out. Political party not pushing back. And then citizens, as I said earlier as well, not having a lot of female role models. So that when you think of competence, capacity, courage and com the only thing maybe of disease is maybe compassion okay women will be like hey yeah well, mm -hmm. sorry. But, <laughs> sorry but when you're thinking about capacity women who will stand who will stand strong women don't quite you as in you can't you can't name them so it's hard so that's the game that answers mm -hmm. point is now women then need to think about how do we play this differently how do we play so mm -hmm. how do we play how I, can I, women I, play I, differently? I think where women can begin from is to understand first that you know that Oh, you don't have political experience is a farce. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. Some people have been in the National Assembly since 1999. Nothing. They have not Nothing. added any <laughs> value Zero. to this uh, great country. <laughs> so she mentioned leaders in the home. The home is the primary unit of society. Yeah. If you can succeed in the home, you would succeed anywhere. Yes. So, I think that women should translate this leadership quality, whether it is in, you know, buy one, set 10, mm. make 10 naira, make 20 naira profit, into leadership mm. and participate. Political leadership. Political yeah, leadership. Yeah. Then, most importantly, they must make their numbers count. Mm. You cannot keep going to the rallies yes. and be singing, Oju, your ball. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you know the way this woman... <laughs> 
Okay, I think that's a good time to take a break <laughs> and we'll continue when we get back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Leading Woman Show. We've been having <laughs> we've been having a truly interesting discussion. So before we went off, um, I want to talk about some of the times that we've seen cities in power. And I think NSARS was one of those, wasn't it? And and I think even movements like Not Too Young to Run. And I mean, for you, even enough in, is enough, and how it started, right? Yeah. Um, can we talk a little bit about? how we can use that sort of energy for women's issues. And I'll tell you what I mean. Mm. We need a not-too-young-to-run type movement for women. What would that look like? Hmm, interesting. I mean, not-too-young-to-run was driven by young people who wanted to run, mm -hmm. who felt that the ages in the Constitution should be brought down. So it was, they had skin in the game, and it was about them. And they were the ones campaigning for it because they saw it. And they've seen it work in other countries. For a women's movement like that, so if you parallel it this year to the gender bills, a lot of people didn't understand what the issues were, number one, mm. so that it wasn't a, you didn't have the full force of women. So it, was, it became more of a CSO fight, quote unquote. Even though Not Too Young to Run what was led by CSOs, but they were able to get young people mobilized who were not necessarily affiliated with any civil society organization. But for the women's bill, I think because also women, the issues we we're talking about conditioning were not like, because there's some women who don't necessarily think it's a problem, for example. So one of the major ones that women struggled with was having a certain number of women in the National Assembly. Some women didn't, didn't think that was... Uh, was what I'm looking for. Necessary. That was necessary. I was on the fence on that, to be quite honest, because I felt mm -hmm. that, one, knowing a National Assembly, I didn't see it scaling mm -hmm. through. But I think it also was a reflection of, again, your earlier point is, how are women deploying their strength? How are they using their power? And we saw it with, with the bills. Or take the indigenization or citizenship bill. That one, I think, if it was explained in Simpler. simpler people will get it the law simply says i as yemi nigerian marry a man who is from switzerland mm -hmm. the man cannot become a citizen of nigeria but chukudi but chukudi marries <laughs> a swiss babe sharp sharp she's she, a citizen yeah, okay. so that in and of itself i thought i mean i believe women would be like mm -mm, mm -hmm. that one is not right or the fact that uh, what state are you from enugu state okay so chukudi and i are married i moved to enugu and so chukudi has don't, I talked in my hair, mm -hmm. Kaya. I decided I want to run for office. They will tell me to go. I'm from Ondo State. Mm -hmm. They will tell me to go back to my yeah. state. True. That I'm not from Enugu. Yeah. Also, or my parents are from Ondo State. I was born in Lagos. Mm -hmm. I've grown up in Lagos, Lagos all my life. Well, Lagos is a bad example because Lagos tends to be a bit lenient. Yeah. I've grown up in Enugu, Enugu all, all my life. I consider Enugu home. Mm -hmm. But my name is Yemi Adam Maleko, obviously, <laughs> not an Igbo name. You'd have to add an Igbo name. <laughs> <laughs> in came Jika, very strong one. Very, just to show yes. I But if I want to run, they will tell me to go back to where mm -hmm. I came from. So those two, and I use those two specifically because I think they're things that women can, can yeah, relate to. Sure. So we need to build that. And women also need to see that they are disadvantaged. I think all of us here see it. Okay. But the women, to your point, who are dancing at the rallies, who are the ones who are making up the mm -hmm. songs, do they see that they are disadvantaged? Yeah. And more importantly, do they see a path out of it? Thank you very much. And that leads me to Chukudi. And the, I mean, the media plays a significant mm, role yes. in shaping narratives, yes. Yes. right? And in a gender setting, as we know. When you are talking to those people, what, what is, <laughs> what, what is, is it that there's real poverty in the land? And like Yemi said, maybe some of us, because we've eaten breakfast and lunch, our eyes clear. Like what, why don't they want progress? Don't they see that mm. actually? And because she's, like she said, maybe they don't see their way out. Maybe they see these men as the way out and therefore dancing is okay. I think ignorance is a major problem. And it's mm. not just whether the person, um, has acquired Western education. Mm. I mean, somebody in the National Assembly, I mean, a, a, <laughs> a leader in the House, you know, stood up and said, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, my I want a polling unit in my house. Yeah. I have 20, I have four wives and I How think nearly 30 Three children. children. He says before 2023, he wants to increase the number to this and that. <laughs> and everyone was cheering. People were excited. Yeah. The thing is, 
whether this person has acquired, you know, the very best of qualitative education mm -hmm. outside the shores of Nigeria or anywhere, so long as they still cling to that ignorant idea mm -hmm. that gives them an undue advantage and they hope that the system continues like this so that women would not be able to break into the arrangements and effect change by contributing positively to the development of our great country, Nigeria, we are always going to be at this level. So it is very important that, I mean, the media is also, forget whatever you see, the media is shaped by people who pay the media mm -hmm. and get them to do what they're supposed to do. So for example, I do not want to go home and explain to my daughter why I cannot pay her school fees because I was <laughs> pushing an agenda someone. and my ogre told me to go home and go and rest. These are the issues that people are faced with because sometimes you're discussing an issue that doesn't even make any sense. It shouldn't be a subject of conversation. But you just keep saying, mm, yes, mm, mm, because we need to allow people to express themselves or because we need to just, you know, just aggregate all the opinions. Mm. So I think that we need to be very deliberate and we need more people who are going to, outside whatever system we have in place, force that change into the minds of people and get them to know that if we continue in this manner, we are going to retrogress. There would be no progress. Absolutely. And so, Anton, let me come to you. One of the major challenges that women face when it comes to sort of seeking political office is resources. Mm -hmm. But then therein lies the numbers yep. in the citizens, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That 1,000 naira times sure. millions Absolutely. of people, mm -hmm. all of a sudden a woman has mm -hmm. millions. How can women, you know, start to tap into this power of the citizen to be both voters, mm -hmm. but also potential Funders. investors. Sure, in I America. think it's to be able to convince citizens to put their money where, where their mouth is. is. Politics is expensive. No, mm. even ward chairman, or the smallest <laughs> money is involved. Money is needed. So I think it's again the conversation that we're having. We need to be real. I think we need to tell people this thing costs money, and I need money to go forward. So if you have a group of citizens that are interested in you, they need to almost the idea. Everything about you, they need to be invested in. If it's helping you um, with money, if it's helping you to write press releases, if it's to be taking your picture behind white backdrops so you look sexy, if it's showing you nice clothes, all of this matters. Yeah. Because you have, like we've been saying, you have to show presence. Mm -hmm. So it's important to actually talk realistically to your citizens about why you need them. Other people have a boatload of money sitting somewhere. They don't have to talk to them about anything. So you have to be honest with yourself. Say, I don't have these resources, but I need them. So I'm going to ask you, I need your help. I actually need your help. And I think as human beings, we like to be asked for help. Mm -hmm. Needed. You know, we like mm -hmm. to be needed. Yeah. So if someone came to me and said, you know, Anto, I need, you know, I need this, this, this. I was like, okay, this, this makes sense. Let me try. I may not have plenty, but I can help you. I use, like I say, I use my platform. <laughs> I don't always have money, but I can post for you. I can put on my WhatsApp status. I can tell my next, you know, my next person. So I really think it's just... Mm -hmm. Being able to c convince someone why you need them yeah. and what you can do for them. Of course, you also want something in return. No matter how much we claim that we're religious and we are doing everything because of God, please, mm. uh, we, <laughs> we're looking for the kickback at make, some point. So you have work. to you know, convince the person what you would do for them when in office. That's what we're doing this about. It's about what you do for me when I'm yeah. in office. Right. So what can I do for you when in office? Let's, let's do let's this. Talk yes, let's, let's talk about it. it. I really like that because it's now talking about this game, right? But what we're bringing out here are the strategies mm -hmm. that women... So this is how women can play the game exactly. differently, mm -hmm. right? So by engaging, yeah. well, by making people understand what the value yeah. is, because it's value exchange, yes. right? Yeah. So it's that, to your point, we've had many people who have gone into the National Assembly, for example, who have not... Who, they are representatives of people, yes. but those people's lives have not been improved. Yes. How are they representing you? Exactly. It's a valid question to yeah. sit with them and say... Thank you very much for being there for four years. What exactly you is it that done. you have done? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And how many people engage? So how mm -hmm. can, I, I, I don't know if it's a knowledge gap, but how do we start to get citizens, right? To ask those difficult questions to their representatives so that, because I think that therein lies an opportunity for a woman who's maybe lurking around to say, actually, I'll raise my hand. Let me go. Let me show you what I can do. And then, you know, you can also do this report card for me mm. when I come back in four years. But I think the, it's probably the reverse that'll be easier. A woman standing up to say, let me go. Mm. Because it's then easier to mobilize citizens to say that, look, this man has been here for four years. He has like nothing. There's nothing to show. Like, let them see his score. And then have a conversation about what I will do differently. Mm. And I need your help to do it. Mm. And we've seen pockets of stories of citizens who have... I mean, Anambra was a very popular one last year. 
when a group of women chose not to collect money because yeah. they thought you have not served us well and we're not collecting money regardless of what you say. So when, and they always say, I mean, the Yoruba says when you wake up, that that's your morning. Your morning. So when citizens do wake up, they actually can take those steps and deprive themselves of things that normally they would have collected. Yeah. So I think that that's certainly one place to do that. And I think off camera, Anto was also making the point, women also seen it a bit of a, as a long game. So it's not a year to elections, mm -hmm. you wake up. Elections come, or primaries come, you lost. And then you've ghosted. Primaries come, you've lost. Who that, okay, the person that won, are you in the campaign mm -hmm. council? Are you there? Are you working? Are you adding value? Are you making connections? Are people seeing you for what you can do? How you can engage? What strategies you bring to the table? So I think that, that we don't probably do as much. And for citizens, it's, the interesting bit about it is also when citizens dis either because of what you've done in other aspects of your life, decide that you're worth gambling on. That one, you might not even have to lift as much yeah. of your finger in terms of help me. The thing will just take on, obviously you have to shape it. But it also shows that when citizens want something, mm. they will do the work. Mm -hmm. So how do you make yourself needed yep. and wanted? Mm -hmm. and, and be positioned to be the, the one right that time. citizens yes. want. So Chukudi, yes. what's our path to a female president? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Mm. So it's because very, citizens it, have to vote them. Very, it, it's <laughs> achievable, mm. it's doable, mm. and I agree that you must you must walk the path. It, you, you nobody is going to give it to you, mm -hmm. uh, especially with this kind of you know the system we have in place today, where some people just want to die there mm -hmm. rather than have you know people who are competent occupy these positions and chart a path for progress. So this is what I am going to say. I am going to you know advocate that as citizens. We are all direct beneficiaries of, we will be direct beneficiaries of good governance. Mm. And we are all direct beneficiaries of the failure and irresponsibility of the government. Now, for somebody who is 12 years old, next year, 2023, given the way elections are conducted in Nigeria and how people tend to sit tight, the person who wins will most likely get a second term. So that will be eight years of two terms. Now, the person who is 12 years old will be 22 years, you know, of adulthood when we go by the legal age. And if government has not done anything for you, you would have no faith or belief in the country. And what you would want is to jack back and run away from Nigeria. So I think that we must be angry enough to take back our country. We cannot live in a country where people on student visas and their dependents are contributing 1.9 billion pounds wow. to the well, British that. economy in just one year. That is over a trillion naira. And we live in a country where 2K now is a luxury. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we, if we are determined to get the best of us to lead and understanding that it is leadership by servitude, it's not by driving SUVs and pa'un, pa'un, up and down. It is, you, are, you are our servants and we have the numbers. If we come out a mass, it is sad that since 1999, the people who win elections proper are those who do not even participate. Mm -hmm. In 2019, we had nearly 84 million voters. Mm -hmm. How many people participated? Less than 30 million. Mm -hmm. So over 50 million people were at home watching season film and cartoon. They stayed at home. And so when uh, nonsense and ingredients become the <laughs> administrator, then we expect change. How are you going to expect change? But can I just add to that, though? And I think also be clear, especially from a, for, for a Lagos audience, Nigeria is not Lagos. Absolutely. Good. Nigeria is not Lagos. Good. So no matter how gingered citizens are following this, doing that, whatever, whatever, at the end of the day, elections at the presidential level will be cast in 36 states. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you must and get a minimum. And majority. Yes. You have to also win in two-thirds yep. two of, yep. of those states. So let's also be clear about that. And also remember that it's not just about the president. I like that in our conversation, mm -hmm. we've talked about National yeah. Assembly a bit. And also governors. Governors are responsible for quite a bit that we think Lots. the president is responsible mm -hmm. for as well. So we need to shine our eye well. President, state governor, senator, house of rep state members, house. state house of assembly, mm -hmm. local government, all of them are servants of the people. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, let's take a break now and then we, when we get back, we'll talk a little bit to the audience. I want to go to the audience. Let me not give them expo <laughs> for the question. And then when we come back, we'll start to wrap this up. Um, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Leading Woman Show. So now I want to go to the audience. Um, 
I think earlier on, we were trying to figure out who are those five competent <laughs> women. Can somebody share with us five competent women that they can name, that they believe can rule Nigeria? That we know. That we know. Not yes, that we know. We that we your, know. We love your mom. Uh, I know, let them you. name them. If we don't know them, <laughs> yeah. that's a different thing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, number one, uh, Ibukuma Woshika. Okay. Number two, follow Mr. Lakija. Okay. Number three, there is this. Um, Okonjo, Dr. Okonjo Iwiala. Mm -hmm. Number four, <laughs> Obi is a question. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, she did well. Try. <laughs> So I think that reinforces our point, doesn't it? And it's an interesting mix. Yes. Yeah. Two politics and, and two, two business. business. Mm -hmm. so, but it reinforces our point. Yeah. These are the people who will vote. Cute. Right? And the question is, what does that woman look like? Because mm. that was the struggle. Yeah. The real struggle is one memory. Mm -hmm. okay. But the second thing is, you know, what does... Yeah, what does, what's even the criteria? What is that? Yeah. Because to your earlier point, competence and capacity, male. Right? Compassion, empathy, mm -hmm. female. female. Yeah. Right? So, as we wrap up this conversation, mm -hmm. how can citizens influence women's political inclusion? Short term, mid term, long term. What does that look like? Number one, if you're inclined to politics, join a political party and influence from within. Because until our constitution is changed, where independent candidature mm -hmm. is allowed, to run for office, you have to be a member of a political party. Yes. So number one, join a political party. Number two, if there are people who are running that you like, reach out. So volunteer. Anto was mm -hmm. given different things you can do. Volunteer for their campaign. Do whatever it is you can do to support their, their work. Number three, if you do see women, I, I was joking earlier that if it's your mom, even if it's your mom, that you think mommy's got it. Mommy can do this work. I've seen her either at business or the way she networks with people. People like her. As Yoruba says, she's a people person. People just gravitate towards her. Whatever it is that you see in people around you, your mom, your aunt, your sister, encourage them to run for office. And then number four, we're going to vote. Let your vote speak for what you want. And I think ultimately when we don't look at candidates by party, mm. but look at candidates for who they mm -hmm. are, what have you done? Like, if I see you outside of your party, would I, I might, end, because ultimately, maybe let's, let's think about it this way. We're entrusting our lives to these people yeah. because they're the ones that make the policy that shape our lives. So if you think about it that way, the fact that a woman is, you think that a woman will, will protect you, compassion. But even for anybody that's running, can I entrust my life to you that you will take care of me? And maybe that as a benchmark for who we choose to elect might help get more women in office. Because women do do better. Yes. That, and that's not emotion that's, that's fact evidence. evidence based <laughs> they do do better Lovely. Mm -hmm. so I think that first off we need to understand that you know politics is not a it's not a career <laughs> for many people it is how long they have spent occupying one office or the other for some people they think they are civil servants and begin from local government or councillor and mm -hmm. want to become the president of Nigeria for them it's a lifelong dream mm -hmm. nothing else not about service. So she mentioned, you know, Ibuku Aoshika and Folorun Shualakija. And these are two people who, maybe not necessarily participating directly in politics, have blazed the trail mm. in whatever sector that they have found themselves. And so possessing that requisite skill, they can channel it in politics Transfer. and lead Nigeria mm. on the path of progress and development. So we need more women. Many of the politicians who are popular are only popular because they, they are that. here and there. Mm -hmm. Nothing. This one says he's married somebody from the east, somebody from the west, somebody from the north. No other value. This one has business partners here, there. No value. That is the only thing they bring to the table. So if we find out more, if there are more women and we put them out there, conduct your research. What I tell people, I've gotten to the point in my life where I am not going to passionately appeal to you to vote for anybody. If you want to suffer, continue. <laughs> continue. And so what would you say? We need to start from the baseline, make sure you have a PVC, mm -hmm. and go out to vote. Yes. That is how we effect change in the democracy. You may not think that Nigeria is a democracy, but it is. Yes. It is. In our it is. And the Developing only way it is. to get into office is by having people vote for you. So you mm -hmm. must have your PVC and you must vote. I know we have people here who probably don't have their PVC. 
I won't judge you. <laughs> but if you don't, you still have a part to play. Encourage those that do to so please go out. go out on that day. If they say I can't go out and vote because of my babies at home, babysits because you are going to be at home. <laughs> also, like we said, make sure you put your, your power behind the candidates. Yeah. Help them in whichever way that you can do. That's the only way the citizenry can actually affect change is by voting. And again, the educated ones of us that can actually research, speak to candidates, please, let's do that. We know there's going to be a mass number of voters who are not voting for candidates. Mm -hmm. It is a fact of Nigeria. Many will just see a picture and put a thumbprint. Many will be will be given rights along the way. It is what's going to happen. It's not going to just disappear in moments. Yeah. Let's just be honest. But those of us that can use these remaining five months to do the research, please, let's do that and let's make an educated choice when we hit those polling units. It's Thank a you very much. <laughs> Let me thank my amazing speakers for an insightful and stimulating conversation that we've had today. I think finally in the, you know, the final conclusion is that the power to elect women as leaders is in the hands of the citizens and citizens need to change their mindsets. They need to support women and they can get women elected and women on the other hand need to engage the citizens, show visibility, um, you know, build track record and, you know, get the support that the citizens can offer. Next week, we will be discussing another interesting topic and I'll be joined by other amazing guests. So make sure you keep a date with us. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to shout out to a leading woman you know and tag us so we can celebrate her too. Until next time, remember that women's leadership can change everything, everywhere. I remain your host, Abosede Jojogan. Bye for now. Hey.